Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy here, and I am here to do a bonus reading for those of you who are under the sign of Capricorn, because when I was going through the uh, list of the stats and the analytics, Capricorn, you were, well, Leo and, v and Virgo were running neck and neck, back and forth with one another, but you were placed very high after them. Um, so, as a thank you, I am going to be doing a bonus reading for you now, but as I was uh, thinking about meditating, uh, I was getting messages. Also, Kata, one of my subscribers, is here on the uh, iPad, and so sh in case you hear, you may not hear her, but uh, she's going to be, you know, lending some uh, of her insight. Um, about astrology and whatever, if she feels led to do that. But she and I have been talking a whole lot lately, and we haven't been recording all of our conversations either, and we need to be more mindful of that because we really have some really great conversations that pertain to the spiritual journey that a lot of us are going on. But um, she's going to chime in when she feels necessary um, or warranted. But um, I was getting messages this afternoon, and this is geared towards people who are on the twin flame journey, and since I don't want to make two separate <laughs> videos for that, um, maybe I'll make this a, a audio recording for them also, but some of you Capricorn, this may pertain to you, and if it is, then, or whoever's led to watch this video, actually. So right now, a lot of the Divine Masculines are going through their own ascension process, right? Some of them are feeling, they don't know what to think. They, they're, they're blaming maybe the Divine Feminine, thinking you may have done something, or they feel like they're cursed, or there's a whole bunch of negativity going around. They might be having physical ailments, they may be having nightmares, they may be, you know, losing things, uh, problems with their car breaking down, just stuff is just not going well for them. Especially the ones that are being more resistant to the ascension, all right? So they may be having a little bit of a hard time. And also, through the lessons for the uh, Twin Flame journey, it was said that we're not supposed to, like, uh, push them on this. This is their ascension, this is their journey, and they got to work it out. But what Spirit gave me to understand today is that if they ask you directly for spiritual information or to advice, or advice like how to protect themselves from negative forces, um, you know, how to heal something, you could send them to a, a um, Something to get their vibrations up, one of those type of videos for uh, Reiki or uh, what's the other word? Rit? What is it? I can't hear you again. Meditative mind. I know, but what is it called? Riffs? Yeah, the riffs. Yeah, riffs. Right. Riffs or um, any of those HZ, Z, whatever. You'll see it. Just put in, tell them to put in depression or tell them to put in you know, neck pain or, or back pain or whatever it is that he's feeling, nausea, whatever. It'll come up in the video and then he can figure it out for himself. You know, just help, you know, guide him to it. Nothing wrong with doing that. If he asks you, if he asks you. Um, you can give him the information as your spirit leads you to give him, right? Because your spirit's going to give you the message that he needs to get because he's asking you. Um... You can remind him that he already has his own spiritual tools, even if you don't think he's moved up the ladder. Whatever his background is, whatever if he has a, a, a any type of spiritual background, no matter what religion it is, whatever his faith is that he was raised in, those are his tools. Those are his tools. The same way your your the way you were raised were your tools when you first started, right? Remember. They're going through the process the same way we did, okay? 
Now, you may have learned things years ago that have become second nature to you, so you might not even remember. But there was a time that before, when you went to bed, you say, now I lay me down to sleep. You know, come on. We all, <laughs> you know, we ain't all come with all of this, you know, wonderful prose when we're praying all the time. We wasn't doing that back when we were teenage girls and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's put this in context and be fair, right? So that's for somebody. Um, <laughs> so remind him that he does have his own spiritual tools. If he has any kind of particular faith, tell him just to pray the prayers that he knows or tell him to search whatever holy book, whatever scriptures that he is familiar with or to just pray sincerely to whoever he entrusts his soul to, whether he says creator, whether he says Buddha, whether he says Allah, whether he says the universe, the divine ancestors, whatever it is, whichever way he goes, even if he's just talking to his higher self, whatever it is, he knows what it is. Just tell him to be sincere for whatever it is that he needs to pray about to protect himself, all right, or to make him not be so uh, depressed. Whatever it is that he's going to, through that he's asking you for advice on, just remind him that he has tools, all right? Don't downplay his tools if they're different from yours because the one you seek could be of another faith of you, you know, because it's not about religion, it's about spirituality. So, and everybody has their own path. Um, let's see. You know, my guides make me write things down. Okay. Uh, okay. Or the Orisha or whoever else, whatever he does, whatever he does, what, no judgment from you. Whatever he does, tell him to do that. That's where he'll find the words. That's where he'll find the tools, just like you did. Um, and ask for divine order to be established in his life with whoever he's talking to. Divine order, divine timing, right? Um, now if he asks you to pray with him, try to leave any references to your own romantic union to the side. So don't be praying about the two of you as a romantic couple. Pray for his protection. Pray for his receptivity and for his spiritual growth. Give thanks while you're praying. If he asks you to pray with him or for him and so he can hear it. Give thanks for the journey, your journey so far for both of you. All right. Give thanks for the peace that you have received from your continued faith and ask that your divine male be able to reclaim his own peace through his continued journey. They were very specific about those words. <laughs> we do not want to diminish his experience or his masculinity. By, well, when he catch up, you know, that's not, don't give him that energy. Don't give him that respect where he is on the journey. That's not diminishing from you because it says that you've already achieved your peace and you're giving thanks for it. But obviously he hasn't received his because he's asking you what's up and to help him. And, you know, so, but he's going through the journey. So don't, don't, don't minimize it and be careful how we, you know, we, you know, some of us can be a little, I told you, you know, don't, don't give him that. He knows, but right now he's doing what he's supposed to do. So let's encourage him. Um, if for any reason he's unable to pray or he can't figure out how to start. Like maybe if he's at work and he feels self-conscious or, you know, whatever. 
Um, you know, he could be talking to you on the, on the headphone, but he don't can't bust out in prayer right there. He's already having problems at work, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'm just saying, they're going through stuff. <laughs> he ain't trying to cause, bring no extra attention to themselves. Um, if he can't figure out how to start the prayer or even to meditate, then explain to him about how music is good for manifestation and meditation, right? So maybe he can listen to the music in the car on the way home, and maybe that'll help. Or maybe he could turn on the music at his job or his office, find a right station, that'll, you know, I don't know what is, uh, what, everybody's different, but there may be instances where that's an option that they can do. Or write, you know, maybe he can sit at his desk, you know, and write. Maybe he has that kind of a, a job that he can read or write, you know, nobody's going to make a big deal. Let him write. Tell him. Draw something. He can buy those adult coloring books with the adult uh, crayons and stuff if he's an artistic person just something so that he can focus on not what's going on and not how everything is you know hurting or, or painful or disappointing or depressing just so he can get out of himself for a little while and meditate focus on something else focus on creating something just like you focused on creating something spirit just said I say. So that's for somebody. So just advice. You ain't got to do it that way, but that's the message. Yeah. Use your own free will and use your discretion. But remember that you are divine. And so we need to try to act in our divinity, even when we know, see, dang, I told you so. <laughs> I just got a dang <laughs> from one of my notifications. So, all right, Capricorn. So what we're going to do, we're going to give you an Akashic reading. And this is just a thank you for your patience, for your subscriptions, your views, your likes and your shares. Thank you all so much for how for, for, for allowing me to share my journey with you and experience this journey with you. And it's just, it's been a good thing. It's been a, a beautiful, a beautiful year, you know, a beautiful couple of years, right? Um, but this has really been something and we have been through the ups and the downs. But we're still here and we're still traveling on this journey. And I don't believe he's brought us this far to leave us. Huh? I say. So let's see what we got going. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get I guess that's what they want me to do. I was going to say 9, but now it says no, I'm going to get 6, and the card that just came up is a 9. So I guess they want me to get 9. I say go. Thank you. <laughs> I hope everybody had good holidays and is getting prepared for the holiday season here in the United States and wherever you are in the world where you also um, celebrate Christmas and uh, New Year's and Kwanzaa and Hanukkah and Yom Kippur and any of the holy, high holy days in whatever faith you're in. Um, or for those of you who don't do any of that, I just hope you're enjoying <laughs> this season. As we go from autumn to winter and uh, enjoying the lights the rest of us pagans put up <laughs> and the trees, the Santa Claus stories that we tell our children and uh, just enjoy the season. There, It does, there is a little different 
air around the time of the year, at least here in New York, and I think in the United States in general from what I see. But we are going to be praying for those who were affected by the earthquake that we had in Alaska, and also those who are dealing with the fires out in Los Angeles, California, um, and just the people of Puerto Rico who are still trying to recover along with the other islands who were affected by the, the, the thunderstorms and the hurricanes that we had this year. Been a whole lot of stuff going on with the planets and all of that, right? So we just thank God for bringing us through and uh, protect us and uplift those who were affected by those incidents throughout the year. Bottom of the deck, up in the air, number 18, one and eight is nine. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who this is, it could be about love. It could be about relation, uh, uh, work, trying to make a decision, plans, things are up in the air. You can't, you have plans, but they're not solidified. You're waiting for someone to come up with an answer or both of you all to come up with an answer or a decision. Maybe you're waiting for the job to be uh, offered to you or given to you. Maybe you went in for the interview or you went to, you know, whatever for promotion. So things are still up in the air. Maybe you're trying to decide where to move. Maybe you're trying to decide whether or not to continue a relationship. Um, it could be anything. So that's the general thing that you're going to be dealing with. For those of you that this will be resonating with during this time period, whenever you watch this. So the first card we have here is number 16, Caught in the Ruins. So this is like the uh, Eight of Swords, right? Except in this depiction, there's two people who are caught inside, but just like in the Eight of Swords, you're not stuck really because you have a way to get out. You can climb out, you can help each other out of it, but instead, people in this picture are just sitting there looking all sad, like they don't know what to do or they don't have any choice, like somebody's holding them there. And the, they can very easily get out if they talk to each other and come up with a plan. Or even if they didn't want to talk to each other, they can climb up on a boulder or two. You know, it might not be comfortable, but they can do it. The next card that came here was the Six of Roses. The War of the Roses. So, War of the Roses, to me, is problems in a relationship, problems in a divorce. Because War of the Roses was a movie back in the day with Michael Douglas. And uh, Glenn, was it Glenn Close? I don't know. Was it Glenn Close? Maybe. Yeah. I think so. I think so, yeah. But anyway, they were having a very, very nasty divorce. I mean, very nasty. Like, they wanted to tear the house down rather than let the other one uh, <laughs> get it. It was horrible. So maybe that's where some of you may be having a problem with your relationship. And... uh People are being stubborn. Everybody's trying to look out for themselves. You had a loggerheads. And so you feel you're stuck. It could be about property, splitting of assets. So that could have you remaining somewhere where you don't want to be, thinking that you can't move because you're focusing on the material. But really, you can move if you not focus on the material or trust God to provide. Right? So, if this is about a job, same type of thing. Maybe you feel you're stuck in the position that you're in. Maybe other people are going for the same job you are and it's getting vicious. So, that could be the fight that's going on. Or you could be fine with yourself because you don't think that you're qualified for this move or this advancement. So, you could be caught in the ruins by yourself. Because of your own fears, your own uh, worries, right? Your own indecision, right? 
could also be, again, someone else's indecision is causing you to feel like you're at a stalemate. Maybe the other person won't sell the property. Maybe the people who are supposed to make the decision at the job are taking their time playing games. Um, so for some of you, it's the decision, it's, it's not in your hands. And so you're waiting for the decision, but it, you could just say, you know what, I don't want this job or, you know, withdraw your application or whatever. So you do have some control, even though you might not think it's practical, but truth of the matter is you do have control. If this is about a relationship, a divorce, splitting of assets, same thing. You can walk away or you can get legal assistance or, you know, whatever you got to do so that a decision will be made. Or you could talk to your partner and maybe you all can communicate because the next card that came here was Saga Community, number eight. And this is also the roses. So this is about community. This is about sharing information and ideas with people who are going to benefit from the things that you are discussing or can help you. So this could even be counseling. If this is a relationship, this could be the people at personnel who are discussing whether or not you're going to be able to get that job. They can afford to give you the raise that you want. It could be the boardroom, you know, board, the bosses, whoever it is, supervisors. For those of you that has to do with business, this could be real estate agents and, and you know, selling a house, and haggling over monies. It could be accountants, financial advisors, things like that. So I think what is maybe is saying that you are involved in this stalemate and you are going for help, you're going for advice, or you are, could be going to church. It could be that kind of uh, information. Shangha, all right, so this could be a spiritual community. So maybe you're talking to your uh, spiritual family, your church elders, getting their advice. It could also be you bringing some information to them that may ha not have anything to do with uh, a divorce or anything like that. This could be saying uh, for someone that maybe you have some ideas about spirituality that are different and you've been, you feel like you can't express yourself and you can't say anything because you're afraid of maybe the repercussions and you don't want to start any problems with the institution, but you have something that you'd like to explore, something that you'd like to bring to the table, another way of looking at things, or maybe you and some people are discussing the doctrine of the, of the organization that you belong to, and maybe they're you're discussing ways to present this, all right? So that could be what's got you stuck. That could also be what's up in the air because you're still in talks. You're still discussing it. Getting people used to the idea. You getting used to the idea. So any of those scenarios could be all of them <laughs> for some of you. Next position here, we have the Queen of Keys. So this talks about someone who... Uh, is knowledgeable, all right? She knows a lot. She knows what she's doing. She's very comfortable where she is. She's reached a certain pinnacle in her career. She may be a writer. She may be some, maybe a teacher, some artistic something, but she knows a lot of stuff. She knows a lot of stuff. She's comfortable where she is. She's a, she's a happy person, but she's, She's, she's looking ahead to things. She's a, she's a forward-looking person. 
Spirit said she could be an investor. She could be a person that's going to come and buy your property. Maybe she's that's that's that could be the per, the, per, the seller, the seller, the real estate agent, or the buyer. She could also be the judge because this is someone who thinks very intelligent, considerate, compassionate, but she's logical. And she's had a life. She's been places. She's seen things. She's not new. The next card that came here was number nine, Archangel Michael. So this is saying, and this is in the center of this reading, whatever's going on, you are protected. Your paths are going to be open for you as you are going on this challenge as you're waiting for things to be finalized or settled you're being protected this is a nine so this is ancestors this is your spirit family and archangel michael protecting you showing you the way giving you opportunities so if this is about the job probably going to hear good news about that because the path is going to be open for you. There may be, like I said, this person could be coming to buy the house and put an end to the, the stalemate that you have here. So this could be the seller. This could be the real estate agent. This could be the judge, an attorney, but somebody that knows what she's doing, definitely. And we have the king of roses. So, this is someone who is waiting for you, Capricorn, perhaps. But he has a gift in his hand. And the Ascended Masters are watching what's going on. So, those of you who are involved, involved in a uh, twin flame relationship, it could be because we have a queen here and a king here on the same line. So that could be what's going on. So maybe that's what she's looking forward to. Meeting up with him. Could be vice versa. Male, female, 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 male, male, whatever, whatever it is. And it could be one person is older, one person is younger. But one person is waiting for the other person and the other person maybe that's what's up in the air maybe she's not sure that she wants to come <laughs> maybe she's not sure she wants to go that route and the options are there because Archangel Michael is in the center of this reading so whatever was the blockage is going to be cleared out and whoever's not sure is going to get some clarity seven of scrolls seven of scrolls this talks about the intricacies and industries this is about paying attention to the work all right um paying attention to what you're doing okay crossing all your t's dotting all your i's making sure that your foundation is firm all right working towards your goal Next card here is number two of scrolls. Two worlds. So this may be someone having to make a choice about, again, could be this queen. That's what's up in the air. Trying to make a choice of where, which way to go. Someone who may right now feel like they've ascended to a place where they're feeling like they're between two worlds, between the 3D and the other side of the veil. It could be a fear about your health for some of you. Some of you could be concerned about your health. 
But it's also going to be talking about someone who may be jealous of your happiness. So this could be those of you who are involved in a relationship where you're trying to separate from a partner to go to another partner, which could be what's happening here. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. So you could be waiting to get the divorce or the separation could be up in the air. All right. And you're feeling stuck because you're waiting for things to be settled. And you and your partner, your other partner. So this could be like a third party relationship. Basically, you're waiting to get out of one relationship so that you can embark in the other relationship and one of the partners is waiting for the other one to make up their mind or to be available right to be free to be divorced or whatever separated ending the third party relationship and this could be the person who you were stuck with the partner that you're with now who may be envious of your happiness, wondering what they're going to do now. If you leave them, they're going to have to work harder. This is going to be affecting the way they live. And when they've been used to having things, a certain level of comfort that they're going to be sacrificing. So that's part of the details that you all are having to go through as you're going through these negotiations, because one partner is not trying to be left out in the cold. All right. One partner is not trying to be, you know, lose their, um, financial stability or their way of life, you know, their, the manner to which they have become accustomed <laughs> as they say, right? So one person doesn't want to be put in that position to have to work any harder or to have to start all over from scratch. That's what I'm getting for some people. Right, right, right. The next card here is the six of keys. So this is someone who has been putting in a lot of work, who has been, uh, this person may be artistic, uh, may be a writer, an artist, something, but there's someone who's been putting in a lot of work and getting their, honing their craft. They've been doing their, their, their diligence and they're just waiting for the opportunity. They're waiting for an opportunity. So for some of you, that this has to do with work. It could be that you have done the work. You are doing the work. You have done the work and you are just waiting. But while you're waiting, maybe things are not going too good for you financially. Maybe you're having a little bit of a hard time. Maybe your bills are not getting paid. Maybe you're waiting for a job and you're having a hard time making ends meet and stuff like that, but it's coming. You have put in the work. And you have presented the work, all right? You've put in long hours, all right? And things are going to change for you soon because of the, the last card you were supposed to get nine, right? You come up with 10 besides the bottom of the deck. You got wishes fulfilled. Oh, shit. So this is telling me that whatever this is that's going on, you'll be fine. You may have manifested this a long time ago. And, or you may have been, you know, presently wishing for this, whatever this re resolution is, whether it's a new job, whether it's selling a house, whether it's breaking up a relationship so that you can be with uh, the person that you love, whatever it is that this, have a way this resonates with you for whatever it is, wish is fulfilled. This is like the 10 of cups. You have more than enough of everything. You have a home, you have food, you have drink, you have time to travel, places to go, comfortable, happy, enough wine to drink, enough food to eat. You're good. 
This is Archangel Michael. And your ancestors are right in the center of this. They are guiding this. That's why this up in the air, 1 and 8 was 18. That was 9. Right? So you, you have had this part of your journey. I'm thinking that for some of you, this, you, are, you are reaching towards the end of this. Not the end of this journey, but like a pinnacle. And if you have been waiting for someone, they're thinking about coming to you. That's what their intention is. They're just waiting for divine, they're just waiting for the right time. They're just waiting for everything to be firmed. This person is a thoughtful person. They didn't get to where they are without using their brain. They're loving, but they're, they, they're a thinker. They're a thinker. And this person is just in love and very, 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 very aware of the worth of this person that is on their way to them. And see, there's only one throne in this in this um, card. There's only one throne, and he's carrying a robe. So this this throne is for you, not for him. He's standing there waiting for you, so that he can give you that gift and help you put on your robe and show you to your throne. He, she, whoever, you know, your partner. The other person, whoever is waiting for you to make a decision or for you to be free to come to them, they recognize your worth, even if they don't act like it. Somebody needed to hear that. <laughs> okay, so that sounds pretty good here. Huh? You good? Sound good? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So let's see. Hmm. Let's do wisdom of the oracle here. All right. It almost sound like me. Well, <laughs> if you're oh, that's the other point. If you're a divine feminine, divine masculine, these you could be any of these signs <laughs> because between the two of you, you all have all of these signs in your chart somewhere. So if you feel confused and stuff, or everything's resonating. Or hitting, it is. It isn't. Excuse me, you're not crazy. It's that's part of the that's part of the twin flame journey. You have all of the zodiac, all twelve signs, or at least all of the elements show up in both your charts between the two of you. So this is from the Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Round and round. <laughs> so this is, this may be a relationship that you have been in before with this person, or this may be a situation that you have been in before where you weren't, someone wasn't sure, maybe you gave somebody else your power by allowing them to make decisions for you in relationships, okay, if this is about business or work, maybe this is just You've done this procedure before. You know how it goes, you know. But be be optimistic because your wishes are going to be fulfilled. Those of you who are in relationships or this relationship may be reminding you of past relationships, similar relationships. There's a reason that it reminds you of it because it wants you to look at your patterns in relationship. But at the end of the day, your wishes are going to be fulfilled. But this is a lesson because now you're going to be looking at the same behavior, the same type of relationship, even if it's with the same person. Um, you're looking at it from a spiritual point of view because you've learned over time whether you're in the divine feminine, twin flame, divine male, whatever, you're still divine. 
feminine or divine masculine. So you're looking at this differently now because you've had some spiritual growth. You're reacting to it differently. Even though you recognize it, whether you've, you know, like I said, whether this is a, a reconciliation of a, of a past love affair or this is what you and your partner go through. Because some people do that. You know, they, they do marry, divorce, they make up, they break up. But, all, but this time you're looking at it differently because you're learning something from it and you now have different tools than you did before. And this is number 25. So that's a seven. So this is something that's a, this is a divine guided lesson. This is a new creation that you are. Seven to me is like, it goes back to the creation story. God looked and he said that it was good. So this is telling me that you've grown. Even if you feel like you're on a hamster wheel doing the same thing over and over, the experience is the same, but the way that you deal with the experience is going to be different for you this time. And that's going to be your proof even to yourself of how much you've grown because your reactions are different now than they were. The last card that came from the uh, Wisdom of the Oracle, number 22, Blessed. Come on. <clears throat> Wishes fulfilled and blessed. All right. But the blessing is not just in high midnight. Midnight wanted to say hi. Um, it's not just in the wishes being fulfilled. It's in the journey. It's in the experience. It's in what you've learned. That's what that's the blessing. That you've got you've gained something. Even though it's the same pattern, you've handled it differently because you've learned your lessons. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. Ashe. <laughs> and the bottom of the deck. Tick tock. Divine timing. You're being given a gift. Have the ability to look at yourself, look at your situation. See how you're different. See how you've grown yourself. Now, you don't have to wait for nobody to tell you. you. You're able to tell yourself. You don't need anybody's approval for anything, and you don't need anybody to tell you how far you've been or your journey or anything. You know for yourself. You know for yourself. This is 30, 30. The creator, right? Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's God. You may feel the time is going slow and see, we got the balloon up there here, just like this balloon here. So this is confirming that things are up in the air. So you're having to wait, but time is moving and time is going to, there will be a fullness of time when there's time, but you got it. You're blessed, your wishes are fulfilled, you just got to be patient and wait. But you can do this because you are here. So it's obvious that you can do this, right? So uh, let me see. Let's get you, I'll get some romance angels. Even though we know I normally don't, but let's do that because everybody loves them. So let's do it. And maybe that'll clear up or clarify some of this information. Okay, so these are by the uh by Doreen Virtue, the Romance Angel Oracle Deck. So <clears throat> this may not have anything to do with this. But if it does confirm, good. So let's, we have, thank you, thank you, Spirit. We need some messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, 
rising in Venus, this bonus reading that they're getting because they have just been such good people, such good viewers, such good subscribers, and they are part of the collective, and we all love each other, right? So look at this. You deserve love. You are lovable. <laughs> You know that. you. They want to make sure that you know that. And that's what I was talking about. You don't need nobody else to tell you how great you are and what good work you've done and that you are lovable. You know now. You know. And it's also safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Separation. Time apart from your partners on the horizon. So this could be talking about you getting out of this relationship with this person that you are trying to leave. Or it could just be talking about the fact that you are on God's time. <clears throat> but it's coming. All right? But you know that already. And you already know that everything's going to be good because wishes are fulfilled. Right? Let your friends help you. So this could be uh, the society that you belong to, counseling, um, advice, friends, co-workers, somebody giving you a recommendation for the work, whatever. It also be your soul team, your ancestors, your archangels, your spirit guides, the divine, the creator, the universe, Allah, Buddha, whoever it is that you and trust your soul to. Ask for them to help you. To give you strength. But you already know that they're there. They got you. All right? But just receive it. Allow it. Go with the flow. Don't fight it. Don't be afraid. Don't doubt it. And the bottom of the deck? Worth waiting for. Wow. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Didn't I just say that? That's what spirit said. Divine timing. And there it is at the bottom of the check. I shake I love my spirit guys. They're the best. <laughs> it's about time. Divine timing is at work. And it's worth waiting for because your wishes are going to be fulfilled. And this whole experience. You got 22 for this bless. 22, that's manifestation. That's communications. That is twin flames. Those are master numbers. And this is a master year. And we are in a portal right now. So a lot of twin flames are coming together. A lot of soulmates are coming together. So if you're, wait, you're waiting on a situation like that, then just rest assured it's on its way. Anything you wanted to add, ma'am? You good? Oh, beautiful. All right. Thank you. So Capricorn, thank you so very, very much for I'm going to get one more card for you guys. Oracle, Journey of Love by Alana Fairchild Rasuli and Richard Cohn. Let's see. One card for Capricorn. All right. Let me get the book out and we'll do it like that. This was really a good reading, I think. Very, yes, good, good. very good. Very good. Very good. So whenever you watch this Capricorn, it doesn't have to be right now. It could be next month. You can always come back to it whenever. But this is your bonus. Okay? So, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep sharing. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're looking for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, one oracle for them from the journey of love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Number 12. Self-initiation. 
Number 12. So 12 is 3, right? So again, communication, right? Uh, Self-initiation. Maybe this is saying you need to call the lawyer, all right? You're sitting around waiting for somebody else to make a decision. Okay, right, right. Allowing someone else to make these vital decisions in regards to your life. Call and see, did, uh, you know, they need you to, were you guys be called back for a third interview, you know? Um, make sure that whoever said they were going to uh, give you a recommendation sent it, all right? Go talk to the attorneys, see what, give them a call, what's up? The real estate agent, when are you, you know, when are we having our open house? We don't have anybody nibbling? You know, initiate something. All right. We got to get a bomb in here, I see. <sighs> Cats. All righty. <laughs> 12, self-initiation. You're being touched by a wave of your own light and motion. Can you feel the blessings and love that are flowing towards you from within you? an upsurging wave of love. This is your own pure divine nature. You can choose to empower another as the carrier of your own divinity, of course. And sometimes if you are not quite ready to recognize your own divine essence, this needs to be. Yet, at any moment, you can choose to recognize that it is you who are initiating yourself into love that you are the being of light, the divine, that is drawing you forward into yourself. At any moment, you can choose to recognize yourself. Will this be such a moment? This oracle holds a message for you. There are many teachers on this path, some humble, some wise, some great companions on your life journey, and some who will enter in and out of your life quickly, perhaps imparting a helpful word or teaching you a more challenging lesson about trusting and relying upon your own wisdom. The greatest teacher, however, is life itself. You can trust in your own experiences and know that it is the divine spark within you, the life within you, that is the one true teacher who carries you home in awakened union with the divine. How easy to love the words flow when it is right. I dare not tell you. I say. I say, I say, I say. So take things into your own hands when you can, and that includes praying, right? Asking for guidance, being thankful for your journey and understanding you deserve every good thing. You've done your work. It's just a matter of time, but it's coming, all right? So thank you again, Capricorn. Thank you, Kayla. And I'll be talking to everybody real soon. As I'm led, all right? So, everybody be well. Thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button. You don't know when I might come up with something, okay? And um, there's a poll on the community page. How many of you have a divine masculine who is a Virgo? Got Virgo in your chart somewhere? Just curious. I, I just, just, just curious. Just have a theory. But we'll see. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you. Be well. Namaste. Peace.